think you're good to go. Okay, thanks. We'll start this morning. I'll ask Senator Daniels to screen share, share the American flag. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Senator Daniels, if you wouldn't mind leading. I pledge of... You're muted. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, the flag to the flag of, of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful morning and it promises to be another beautiful day. I'm Senator Bob Guider from District 2. Today we'll be holding a meeting of the Senate Ways and Means Committee. Before we get started, I'm gonna read a checklist to ensure that the meeting we're holding is in compliance with the right to know law. As chair of the Senate Ways and Means Committee, I find that due to the state of emergency declared by the governor as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and in accordance with the governor's emergency order number 12, pursuant to executive order 2020-04 and its extensions, this public body is authorized to meet electronically. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting, which was authorized pursuant to the governor's emergency order. In accordance with the emergency order, I'm confirming that we're providing public access to the meeting by telephone with additional access possible by video and other electronic means. We're utilizing Zoom for this electronic meeting. All members of the committee and selected legislative staff have the ability to communicate contemporaneously in this meeting through this platform and the public has access to contemporaneously watch and or listen to the meeting on Zoom or YouTube and via phone by following the directions and links provided on the general court website. We provided public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting in the Senate calendar. We're providing a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. If anyone has a problem, please email remote Senate, that's one word, remote Senate at leg.state dot nh dot us or call 603-271-6931 271-6931 in the event the public is unable to access the meeting it will be adjourned and rescheduled please note that all votes taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote and finally let's start the meeting by taking a roll call attendance when each member states his his or her presence please also state where you are if anyone else is in the room with you during this meeting which is required under the right to know law. I'll call the roll. Senator D'Alessandro. I'm Senator Lou D'Alessandro, District 20 in Manchester. I'm in my home and I'm all alone in this room. My wife is in the house. Senator Daniels. Senator Gary Daniels. I'm at my office at the State House and I'm alone. Senator Rosenwald. Good morning, Cindy Rosenwald from District 13. I'm at my home in Nashua and I'm alone in the room. Senator Hennessy. Good morning, everyone. Aaron Hennessy from Littleton. I am home and alone in the room. And I'm Senator Bob Gaida. I'm at home in my home in Warren. I'm alone in the room with family and dog upstairs. So it being nine o'clock, we'll uh, open the hearing on House Bill 354. And uh, yeah, recognize the prime sponsor, Representative Lang, um, who should be available. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senators, for taking my testimony today. I'm Representative Tim Lang from Belknap 4. Uh, I am uh, calling uh, the prime sponsor of, of House Bill 354. And uh, this is a pretty straightforward bill. I'm not going to waste your time. Uh, this bill is just a housekeeping bill. Uh, one of the things when we uh, passed the bill my first, my second term here. Uh, I was the prime sponsor of the sports betting bill. Um, this language wasn't vetted very well. That was in there. And this is the language that actually shows up on a ballot when a town seeks to approve to allow sports betting to occur within the community. Um, and in talking with the lottery, um, we agree that the language could just use a little bit of cleanup. And so we decided to, so this bill has been submitted. It's just a housekeeping bill. I would appreciate your support of the bill and pass. This bill did pass on consent in the house. Uh, 
Bob, you're still muted. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> um, thank you, Senator. Uh, I'm sorry, Representative Lang. Are there any questions of, uh, of Representative Lang? Hearing none, thank you very much for your testimony. No problem, sir. Have a great day. We'll see you this afternoon. Yep. Okay. Right. So, Any Mr. testimony. Mr. Chair, I do not see any hands raised, and we have no other folks signed up to speak to this bill. All right, then I'll move to close the hearing on House Bill 354. Um, <clears throat> having nine minutes, uh, are you interested in executing this? It seems to be straightforward. Senator Rosenwald? Yes, I would move we go into executive session. One second, Matt. All right, moved by Rosenwald, seconded by D'Alessandro. Uh, we'll take the roll. Senator Daniels. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes. And Senator Guida votes yes. All right, now an executive session. Move on to pass on House Bill 354. And did I hear Hennessy second that? Yes. Okay. Rosenwald and Hennessy moved and seconded. Any discussion on House Bill 354? Yeah, just a, a question, Mr. Chairman, if I might. Okay. Uh, and uh, would, would this allow any city or town in, in the state of New Hampshire to have sports betting? There's no limitation on the number of sites. I don't think this addresses that issue. I think this is just the wording on the ballot. Um, uh, which would had had been reported as being a little bit confusing that the towns that were looking to do it um, were thinking that they were going to have to run it. And so this language cleans that up, but I don't see it changing that. Senator Rosenwald? Yes, there is a 10 license limitation That's what I in thought. statute, and that is not changed by this bill. Okay. This just, I think it's a good idea because the current language is shall we, which Right. Could be any we, the state, the country, the universe. So I think the idea of moving it to name the municipality is very sensible. Right. Yep. Yeah. Any further discussion, Senator Daniels? Yes. Uh, when it talks about shall the the town of uh, is that left up to? Okay. I, I guess I just answered my own question. This is on the ballot. So it, I was just going to question whether it was a governing body that could decide that or whether it's a legislative body and it, it would be the legislative body. Yeah. All right. Further discussion. Hearing none, are you ready for the vote? All right. We'll call the roll. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. Senator Daniels? Yes. And Senator Guida votes yes. Unanimous consent? Yes, please. Move consent. Hennessy moves consent. Second by Rosenwald. We'll call the roll. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. Senator Daniels? Yes. Senator Guida votes yes on the consent. I'll take All it right. out if you'd like. Okay. Senator Rosenwald will take it out. <clears throat> Is there a motion to come out of executive session? So moved. So moved. Okay. Moved by Hennessy, second by D'Alessandro. And uh, we'll call the roll. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. Senator Daniels? Yes. Senator Guida votes yes. We're now out of executive session. And uh, we have six minutes. Take a break. Get a cup of coffee. <laughs> actually, actually, Senator Guida, you, you scheduled the second hearing for 9 10. Oh, that's right. Gosh. Make it a quick cup. I've written down 915. Make it a, a 60 second cup. That's right. All right, then we'll just wait a minute here and, and roll into 306. All right, it's now 910, and we will open the uh, hearing into House Bill 306. Um, Representative Major had called me yesterday, said he's unable to attend. He'd asked me to introduce the bill. So Senator D'Alessandro, if you'll take the gavel for just a moment, I'll bring this bill in. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> so I call upon uh, 
Senator, Senator Guider to introduce House Bill 306, an act relative to revenue estimates while operating in the emergency orders caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Call up with uh, Senator Guider. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Uh, this bill directs the House Ways and Means Committee to consider revenue estimates for the state as frequently as the chair determines is required by changing conditions under the pandemic. Um, so it's again uh, requested and sponsored by uh, Representative Major, Chairman of Ways and Means in the House. Um, and I at this time would also uh, seek to introduce uh, my amendment to the bill. <clears throat> and if you give me just a second, that's um, Amendment 0870S. Good. That would add a Roman three <clears throat> under section one that would require the Ways and Means Chair to notify the Senate Ways and Means Chair uh, anytime such meetings are being convened in accordance with the statute. <clears throat> a lot of times, as you know, we piggyback with the House. Uh, and be, I think it would be valuable to make sure that we had the, the opportunity to at least listen in, if not actually participate with them. And uh, Senator, I'm sorry, Representative Major is in agreement with that amendment. So <clears throat> do, we, would, do we move the amendment first or the, the bill? No, we've got to move the amendment first. Oh, wait a minute, we're the, not in uh, executive uh, session. Oh, yeah, sorry. Right. <laughs> All right, we got All right so. Second first. Uh, uh, I'm, just a, uh, 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 any questions? Any questions on Amendment 0870S? I'm not able to open my Ways and Means Drive. There's something wrong with it. Okay, so I, I don't have it in front of me. I can email it. Thank you. I did have a question, mm -hmm. and I don't know who could answer it. Sure. Um, What's the question? But but I noticed that the the title of the bill is related to the current pandemic, and the bill, as introduced, spoke specifically about the COVID pandemic and the fiscal years. Um, and then the way the House amended it is much more general. Um, under any emergency orders or emergency just when how means committee wants to. And I'm wondering why they did that and you know what the thinking was to make it so broad. Who, do you want to... Uh... Yeah, I, I think. Question to I, Senator Gaida, Senator Gaida. Sure, thank you. Well, or the LBA that? or someone <clears throat> who is there. Okay. I think the LBA would be second. I don't uh, know if Senator Gaida. Senator Gaida, why don't you try it? Then we'll get the LBA. Well, sure. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We, um, uh, it would just seem to make sense that uh, other types of emergencies that could cause fiscal disruption could take place. So if we limited it to COVID-19, let's just say we had... Uh, God forbid a tsunami or something like that hit the coast, we wouldn't be able to do this. Um, so they expanded the, the meaning just anytime there's, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Basically unforeseen circumstances with a significant enough impact to potentially affect state revenues that we'd be able to, that the house would be able to come into, uh, committee come into session uh, and discuss, you know, e eventualities and, and so forth to deliver perhaps amended revenue estimates for the state budget. Uh, for the question. Please. Yes, yes, please. So this could be every week. I mean, there are no limits on this right. at all. And do you, do you feel that that's appropriate in terms of the use of DRA and LBA resources. Well, I there be not, no limits. I'm not certain. I'm as speaking for uh, as a legislator. I'm not certain that there wouldn't be a mass civil protest if you tried to meet every week with 20 members of the House Ways and Means Committee. Um, you know, in, in exigent times, um, I, I'd certainly defer to what uh, what LBA and DRA uh, thoughts are in this as well. Thank you. Just one, one further, I think uh, Senator Rosenbaum made a good point. There comes a point in time 
when revenue projections are taken over uh, by the Senate, there's, there's, there's got to be a stop period because of the transfer of, of the budget and the projections uh, to, to the Senate. Uh, if that's not the case, the House could be making revenue projections well into the Senate budget and, and cause uh, some real concerns about the document as it moves to the Committee of Conference. I, I just, I think Cindy brings up a, a good point and uh, this, this, uh, this really allows for that. I, I would say that it allows for the House to convene and to let the Senate know it's meeting. I don't think this has any legal effect on the Senate once we take over the budget. Once the House mm -hmm. has delivered its estimates. But let's say that something you know awful happens after that. We're in the midst of deliberating. Um, I would welcome the House participation in coming up with perhaps some revised uh, estimates based on the, the, uh, the critical circumstances. Senator Rosenwald, you have a question. Thank you. So following up on that, what if those unforeseen circumstances occurred in the second year of a biennium and um, the House could convene to consider revenue impacts? Would the Senate be at a disadvantage at that point? I'm not sure how the, I'm not sure what you mean, Senator, in terms of disadvantage. Well, I mean, if that, would the House be able to call you up, let's say, or send over some revision that we couldn't respond to if they decided in the second year to change the revenues? I, I, I don't think that sort of by themselves. Yeah. I don't think, I mean, they could certainly throw numbers out, but. Um, uh, Would again, we have to respond, I guess is my question. Or could we just say, thank you very much. Nice to hear from you. I'm not knowledgeable enough to know that at this point. That's an excellent question. I just uh, don't want us to be, uh, you know, separation have of our powers. hands tied. Right, right. I don't think this gives any authority for them to, to um, how can I say this? Their revenue estimates would still have to come to the Senate. I mean, they can estimate all day long, but I don't think the state budget's going to go without our approval uh, with the change to the revenues. And certainly, I think the Senate president would, would uh, look to call in this committee to, uh, to session, or, you know, to meet, to discuss it. But I don't have a clear answer on that. Could we ask the LBA? Oh, Mr. On the is, is, some, is someone from the LBA on board, Ava? Yes. So, Mr. Chair, two, a few things. Senator Hennessy and Senator Daniels had their hands raised. And okay. then we have Representative Almy and Representative Brahmi with their hands raised. And we do okay. also have DRA folks in attendance. So Thank you let you. me know how you want me to proceed well, with we all got a good <laughs> cast. We got a good cast here. Why don't we, why don't we do the senators first? Uh, okay. Because they their 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 uh, hands were up, then we'll get to Alby, and then we'll get to Abrabi, then we'll get to Revenue. Let okay. Revenue sum it up. How's that? Okay. So who's the first in line? Is it Senator Hennessy or Senator? Who, Senator Hennessy said she's she's okay. So now it's Senator Daniels. Okay, Senator Daniels. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Is there anything in statute right now that prohibits the Ways and Means Chair from calling a meeting to look at revenues for? Any reason? Uh, I'm just questioning why why is this needed? Uh, I I don't I don't have an answer to that question because it's never happened. So I I can't remember this ever, ever happening. Now I've, I have um, I've, I've seen this the house redo their revenue estimates, but uh, that was prior to crossover, and they brought they've already done that. They've, they've done that already. They had one set of recommendations and they've revised those uh, so that that process has taken place within within the operation uh, of the uh, of the of the formulation of, of the budget but but that's to the best of my knowledge that's how that's happening if somebody has a better answer i would i would appreciate coming forward Maybe would lba we... have an answer so i have well, I, I think the order we wanted was the two representatives and then LBA. Yeah, let's, okay. So well, representative, let's 
Representative uh, Abrami. Okay, let's have Representative Abrami. Let Representative uh, Almy go first, since he wrote the amendment to this bill, and then I'll, I'll just chime in if I need to. Fine, fine, fine. That's without 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 exception. But let's send uh, Representative Almy go first. Representative Almy. You should be all set to unmute, Representative Almy. Thank, thank you very much. Um, I. Uh, when I first became chair back in 07, I went to the House clerk and I asked for the history of the Ways and Means revenue estimates. And I believe I may be the only one with documents at this point uh, going way back because she showered them on me. On um, It was the Senate who originally in 1970 uh, or 71 decided to that we needed to do revenue estimates and you did them for one year. And then the Senate decided to do them the second year and the Senate decided, the House decided to do them the second year and the Senate decided to just let us go ahead with it. There is nothing written in statute about the revenue estimates on, but, for, by tradition for a very long time, and I don't know when that started, they have, the House has, has done them and put them into um, the budget in the place that it's in and um, provided a way to say, yes, we've got a balanced budget or we don't. And it has gone over to the Senate that way and the Senate has redone the estimates. Uh, that's the budget part of it. And after the committee of conference, they are put in stone and made into a plan for the two years, um, which doesn't get changed even if we change the revenue estimates after that. Uh, the revenue estimates officially don't exist. Other states don't realize that we look at them more than once every two years, um, but they are on the table in the House as the House version. The Senate can take them up at any time it wants to because there's nothing in statute. Um, and the House has no authority to impose revenue estimates over the Senate. Um, and it will not change, what, whatever we do will not change the budget. What it does is to send a signal to people that, um, oh boy, we're in trouble, we've got to, figure out what to cut in the middle of the two years or, or on, look, we've got all this extra money. Maybe we should do something with it. <laughs> and on the house does, on the house chair does have the authority and does uh, call for revenue uh, discussion in the house committee on whenever we think that there is a change, a significant change in revenues going on. Uh, and we, uh, if we think it's significant enough, then we take it back as a house resolution to the floor and the Senate can react to it as it will and the governor can react to it as he will or she will. And uh, the reason that Representative Major put this bill in was that over the course of the pandemic, we were trying to get revenue estimates. And this had happened before uh, to both Representative Major and myself on um, that on um, some of the agencies did not want to look at their revenue estimates and come and tell us if they thought that they were in trouble or okay on the revenue estimates. And he thought that this would be a way for us to, uh, to be able to put a little more pressure on those agencies to come forward. And it's not always the same agencies. The DRA has always been very, very helpful, whatever happened. Um, so um, that's, that's the history of it. Thank you, Representative Elby. Any questions for Representative Elby? Senator Rosenwald? 
Thank you. Um, so isn't there a process in place for the House to file a joint resolution in the second year to um, relook at revenues already? And it would never have to go beyond the House and the Senate as a joint resolution, mm -hmm. but would be a vehicle for uh, updating or discussing or relooking at revenues mm -hmm. during the biennium. Um, and the House could work on it at its pleasure prior to crossover, and then it would be in the Senate's hands if it passed. I guess well, I'm, my question questions. really is why, how does this bill help with the situation you described in ways the, that there aren't already a process? There's only one way in which it conceivably helps, and that is that um, we have a little statutory authority to waive at agencies that may not want to have to address their revenue estimates again. And that it would be at any phase, uh, but usually after the budget when we're trying to, to calibrate whether we're in trouble or not, or in great shape or not. Uh, and there is literally, this would be the first statute about the revenue estimates what Representative Major has proposed. So um, we've never done, as far as I know, a joint resolution. I believe I remember that what Karen Wadsworth gave me um, for the second year was that suddenly the House was doing them and the Senate had stepped aside from doing them all together and was just using the House and then gradually it got to the procedure it's in now. Um, so on um, it's, it is totally based on tradition at this point. Mm. For, totally for the question. Anybody outside the state or a lawyer. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much, Representative Elwood. Uh, Senator Roswell, a further question? No, thanks. Okay. Is there anyone else that has a, that has a question for uh, this of this piece of legislation. Uh, uh, Representative Brevy, did you wish to speak? Ava, is he, is he still there? Uh, Senator, I just added him back. I just gave him speaking capability. So it looks like Representative Abrami should be able to, to okay. share it out. Representative Barney, did you wish to speak on, on the House Bill 306? Real, real quick, uh, Senator. Um, we had the same discussion in ways and means about why, just like this is this discussion. And we eventually came to the conclusion that this, this would, would uh, not, because uh, we, we do every, as you know, we do every estimates a couple of times a year anyway. Uh, and and, and I, I agree with uh, Representative Valmi that it really is, it really is compelling certain agencies. Most agencies are good very good about this. DRA is excellent. Anytime we ask them, they give us the information that we need. Uh, so we, we convinced ourselves that yes, this probably is a, is something that uh, we should put in statute. Thank you. Any questions for Representative Abrabi? Uh, uh, if not, thank you very much, Representative Abrabi. Senator Daniels' hand's been up. Oh, excuse me, Senator Daniels, apologize. Um, uh, Representative, uh, it's listed in here three unrestricted funds. Are there more than three? No, those are the ones that those are the ones that we normally look at uh, when we're doing our revenue estimates. It's well, it's four. I mean, it's the it's the, the, the general fund, the education trust fund, the highway fund, and the fish and game fund. Okay, so you. I'm just I'm just wondering if what you what you put down here if it's actually going to restrict you more than uh, ha have the statute silent on it and you'll be able to take up other things. Uh, well, I, I 
I mean, actually, no, we, we, these are the ones that we normally look at. These are the major funds revenues that we look at. Uh, you may have a point there, uh, but uh, this is what we chose to do. Okay, thank you. That, 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 that we know, just for FYI, we, we did not even have the discussion on other funds, just so you know. Okay, thank you. Further questions, Senator Daniels? Are you okay? I'm all set. Great. Uh, okay, we've got uh, Revenue Administration in, in LBA to address this, Ava. So, Mr. Chair, we only have folks from the DRA in attendance, no one from the LBA. Okay. Uh, then let's hear from the DRA. Who's here from the DRA? Uh, Carolyn Lear and Melissa Rollins. Okay. Uh, who's first? It can be Carolyn Lear if she's available. Okay. Carolyn? Hi, Representative. Uh, hi, Senators. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, I don't know that we have anything um, to add. As Representative Almi and Abrami said, we're happy to participate in the revenue estimating process whenever they want to hear from us. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that the committee has, um, but otherwise we just don't take a position on this issue, because um, whatever you want, we're happy to provide it. Thank you. Any, any questions for Carolyn? Right, if not, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Melissa, do, would you like to comment? Let's see here. I will just second what Assistant Commissioner Lear said. Okay. Thank you. So we have a <clears throat> to the second power. We, we have it. Okay. Any any questions from anybody on the committee? Uh, just just quickly before I turn it back to, to Senator Guida, uh, I, I think that the history that was presented by Representative Albi is consistent with with what I've witnessed uh, since I've been I've been in the uh, in the legislature. Uh, I don't know if this would if this would make a, any kind of a difference, but that's the way it is. Uh, Senator Guida, you uh, returned to the chair, and thank you so much. Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Senator D'Alessandro. So, are there any further testimony on this bill? Uh, Matt, uh, Mr. Chair, Representative Abrami, or excuse me, Representative Almi has her hand had her hand raised. All right, Representative Almi. Thank you. I just wanted to answer Senator Daniel's question. Um, when you, in your wisdom, decide to take the Department of Labor off into a dedicated fund or on the, the most, just about everything in the PUC is dedicated on we or the Medicaid enhancement tax when that was taken off into a dedicated fund. Um, we were told that we were no longer responsible for or dealing with those funds. Um, we do deal with a lot of the dedicated funds in the dedicated fund committee, as you know, but um, otherwise um, they are not uh, what we consider within our area of purview. It's just those four largest funds other than, than the nuclear plant, which we also don't touch. <laughs> Thank you. All right, any further comments or questions from the committee? Hearing none, uh, and I assume no further uh, people to testify, Eva? No, Mr. Chair, I see no hands raised and there are no additional folks signed up to speak to this bill. All right, we'll close the hearing then on uh, House Bill 306 and the, and the amendment and uh, move on uh, at this time to House Bill 281 FN. And um, let me get over there and all right, uh, House Bill 281 relative to the tax expenditure report relative to delaying the enactment of the single sales factor under the business profits and business enterprise taxes. And we'll recognize uh, Representative Abrami uh, as the prime sponsor. Representative? 
thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, for the record, uh, State Rep. Hattabrami, Rockingham 19, Stratum. I'm here, obviously, to introduce uh, House Bill 281. This bill passed 22 nothing in uh, House Ways and Means and was on the and passed in the consent calendar. I am the prime sponsor. Uh, Representative Ames is my co-sponsor, but for all practical purposes, this is a bill of the House Ways and Means Committee. Uh, <clears throat> this bill do does four things. It amends the uh, which tax expenditures must be reported upon each year within the tax expenditure report. This uh, this bill, I we had filed this bill last year. This was my original bill. It was just that. It was a cleanup bill. Uh, if you recall, years ago when we went to double sales factor, uh, the legislature asked DRA to report in the tax expenditure to report how that is going. That is still continuing today, even though one uh, and then DRA uh, informed House Ways and Means that that no one really pays attention to that report. Can we take it out of the tax expenditure report? And that's all that bill was, and it's the. It was the base bill last term for a bill that never made it through uh, the Senate process. Uh, it was probably tabled along with many other bills. So, uh, so we started this year with uh, a similar bill. So we, we, we included that, but the main part of the bill is it delays implementation of single sales factor under the BPT for taxable periods ending on or after December 31st, 2022 to periods ending on or after December 31st, 2026. So <clears throat> December 31st, 2022 is this, this, this coming December. Uh, you say, well, why, why delay it to 26? Well, we did that in coordination with the DRA. Uh, we're trying to understand the impact of, of going to market-based sourcing uh, and it would take until that period to get the full impact of that, uh, according to DRA. And, and, and if they, they're on the phone, I'm sure on the Zoom, I, I'm assuming they will chat, uh, discuss with that with you as well. So that's the main part of it is the delay. And I will explain our reasoning why we want the delay uh, in a minute. But for that period, meaning from uh, December 31st, 2022 to 26, uh, the current methodology, which includes for the first time a market based sourcing. And the fourth thing it does is it amends the duties of the Legislative Commission. Now, when the Senate put into House Bill 4 a uh, single sales factor, it also put a commission into House Bill 4 and uh, from the last budget. And uh, all this does, and that timed out in uh, December of of uh, last year. So we want to reactivate that, that commission uh, via this bill. Uh, and it's a, it's a joint, it's a joint uh, committee of the uh, Senate and the, and, and the House. So <clears throat> um, let's go back in time for a minute. About four years ago, we received the Senate bill calling for a commission uh, uh, to be formed on market-based, uh, to study market-based sourcing on how sales in a apportionment formula would be handled <laughs> sales due to services and intangibles. This bill was filed by Senator Bertzel for a constituent. At that time, we were uh, a cost of performance state where the, where the, the uh, <clears throat> service is performed gets the tax benefit. The state in which the service is performed gets the tax benefit. Market-based sourcing is now uh, the state where the benefit is received gets the be tax benefit. So that was the change that uh, uh, we were looking at in this in, in this commission. The commission was formed. Representative Major and I were on it, along with the representative Lovejoy. We were joined by uh, Senator. Uh, my friend, Senator D'Alessandro and Senator Bertzel was actually the chair. We had uh, Commissioner Step on it and we had experts in tax accounting and tax law. We, the bill was originally, the commission was supposed to last a year but we actually extended for a year and a half. And in, in that, in the final report, we concluded, yes, we as a state should move to market-based sourcing. 
at the very end, we started talking of this commission, we started talking about single sales factor. And, but in that report uh, of this commission, we, uh, we never blessed moving forward with single sales factor. Uh, a bill was filed after that report. Uh, it was uh, uh, in both House and, and uh, Senate Ways and Means both agreed that we should move forward with market-based sourcing. So as I mentioned, market-based sourcing is in effect for the first time this year. But in our discussions on, on market-based sourcing, it said that uh, <clears throat> We saw, well, first off, we solved the problem of our, our companies being taxed or having to apportion taxes to multiple states uh, for the same service. So, uh, so New Hampshire, so businesses that were, were based in New Hampshire providing services to other states no longer have to pay tax to New Hampshire they have to pay tax to the state in which the service is being perform, uh, performed. So the challenge that we all talked about is that we had to identify all those out-of-state businesses that provide services from their home state to New Hampshire. This is the only way that we can be sure that this will be a, a, at least a tax neutral, revenue neutral uh, 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 solution uh, for for uh, New Hampshire, if not a positive revenue for New Hampshire, so that's background. <coughs> so that's that's we are we're finally moving into the market-based sourcing world. So let's fast forward a little bit. So without hearings in the House on single sales factor, uh, single sales factor was placed in House Bill Four, Trailer Bill. Uh, which was the trailer bill of the compromise budget bill that was passed in September of, of 19, last November. I mean, two, two Novembers ago. After the original House uh, 2020 uh, 21 budget was vetoed by the governor. So this, this provision in House Bill 4 did two things. It allowed single sales factor, uh, factor apportionment starting taxable periods ending on or after December 31st, 2022, which means starting next year. And it created a legislative commission, as I mentioned, on apportionment. Now that commission was supposed to meet twice, at least twice in public hearings on single sales factor. And there was four, four uh, representatives and three senators on this, on this joint commission. Uh, joint uh, committee. Uh, and we were supposed to report in November of 2020, last November, whether to rescind single sales factor. Well, because of COVID, this commission never met. Uh, and, <clears throat> and before this, when this provision was put in, we were told by legal counsel that this action would be legal, that, the, that a, this, com this committee would have the ability to rescind something, rescind single sales factor. Well, when November, last November came by, it turns out the same lawyer said, no, you do not have, this is my understanding now, you do not have that authority. This committee does not have that authority to do that. So what happened, single sales factor is now a statute, it is now law, was not rescinded, and <clears throat> there were no hearings in which uh, House or the, the Senate participated in uh, related to this. Uh, and understand that the House never had a hearing on single sales factor. Now we had a, we had a hearing on we had a hearing on this bill, but all of the normal tax experts never testified. They just, they didn't come, no one came. So, uh, so we still don't know. Uh, we still do not know uh, 
what the logic was to move forward with single sales factor in the house. So let me give you our reasons uh, for this four of them that we want to slow this down. We, we need to let the change in market-based sourcing set in to see the impact on business tax revenues. Uh, this, we want to create a new baseline. We need to allow the new DRA computer system time to begin providing much needed data that will help in finalizing a comfort level with the implementation of signal sales factor. Three, we need to ensure that a move to single sales factor does not create a major hole in business taxes, which is the state's major source of revenue. Other states, and we, we learned this from the commission that I was on with Senator Del Sandro and others, that other states jumped in without data. We tried to understand their logic for moving forward with a single sales factor. And they were able to do this because they have personal income tax, taxes and sales taxes that buffer any potential mistake on their part. The fourth uh, reason is that we have learned that, understand that the business community is split on whether this is a positive for them. So we need time to evaluate this. I was asked about two months ago to make a presentation to the BIA Fiscal Committee. And it was clear in, from that meeting and, and the BIA has not taken a position on this bill because their membership is split on whether, and hopefully they're, they're on, on the Zoom and they could testify to this, uh, <clears throat> but they have not taken a position on single sales factor among themselves. And I wanna close with, uh, if you go to the fiscal note, uh, if you go to the last paragraph in the fiscal note, uh, midway down, the, it says the department meeting the DRA states until it obtains returns from taxpayers utilizing market-based method of sourcing under the business profits tax for taxable periods ending on or after December 31st, 2021, the department is not able to reliably predict the impact of delaying the implementation of single sales factor apportionment. So, but I look at that those couple of sentences and say, you can conclude the converse. DRA is not, does not know the impact of the implementation of single sales factor. If they don't know what the impact of rescinding is, they don't know what the impact of moving forward with single sales factor is either. So I guess big picture, house ways and means, is taking a more conservative approach to this uh, about what the impact will be if we move to single sales factor, knowing that we have, and you understand our triangle, we know that we have uh, most of our, our business taxes are from, uh, from the big uh, multinational companies. Uh, uh, and we're, we're without, we're a little bit, and a lot of those, Big companies produce product that are sold internationally in other states, and we are concerned that uh, they will benefit. Uh, but if their benefit could be a major uh, budget buster for us in terms of revenue, if uh, the, those revenues are are, are uh, a lot less than we are collecting now. Again, business taxes are our major revenue source. And we're, we, we, we are saying to the Senate, uh, please join us in slowing this down a bit. Uh, we're willing to work with you. Uh, I, know, I know moving out to, uh, all the way out to, uh, what's the year, 26, uh, 20, uh, yeah, 26 is a long way out, but we, we, we're willing to work with the Senate and try to uh, come up with a compromise on this. With that, I, I, I'll take any questions. Any questions from members of the committee? Senator Daniels. Thank you. Uh, Representative Brahmi, I, I was looking through the fiscal note as you were reading it. You mentioned a date in 2021, and I don't see that. 
Can you guide me to it? Yeah, well, this is my the fiscal note. Uh, oh, okay, it's the fiscal note as the bill was introduced. Yeah. So down the bottom, it's the thir third line from, uh, it's the last paragraph. I got it, I got it, sorry. See it? Okay. All right, yeah, thank you. Right. Yeah. Just a, a, a point. Yes, Senator Alessandro. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Bradley, uh, I we served on that committee and we got two very different schools of thought with regard to, to single sales. Um, Attorney Sullivan was a member of, of, of the committee, gave us uh, a positive a positive note. And from Revenue Administration, we had a, a, a situation where they weren't really clear at, at this point in time as to what would uh, what would happen as a result of adopting the single sales factor. Uh, the, the positive stated that that because uh, what activities that are taking place in surrounding states, this is a this is a direction that we should move in. Uh, could you comment on that, please? Because pushing it off to 2026 uh, makes it a huge difference, a huge right. difference. Right. Uh, yes, I, I think the testimony was, and I, I agree. You know, he 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 did said, look, about 30 states have adopted single sales factor, uh, if I recall, something like that. Right. Uh, but but as a commission, as a, as a, I can't remember if we were a commission. Yeah, we were a commission. As a commission, we we did not put that in the report, though. We did not say move forward with single sales factor as a definitive. Yes. I agree with that. Were, and, 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 and his his point was simply everybody else is doing it. You, you know, eventually we're all going to jump in to single sales factor, which is probably true. Uh, and what we're trying to do here is just slow it down and just try to understand the impact uh, of it. Uh, and uh, again, that's our position. And like I said, uh, if the DRAs, they will explain why, why 26. It's basically, you know, people will file this year's a year from now. So that's a year uh, of, of uh, market-based sourcing. And then, then there are extensions and all of that. So by the time all is said and done, we really won't know the full picture of market-based sourcing until uh, that, that tax period. But we're willing to discuss this with the Senate uh, if, if you wish. Further questions? Senator Rosenwald. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for taking my question. Um, you and I have both been in the legislature pretty long by now. It's always been my understanding that we can't bind a future legislature. Um, and so I'm wondering if we push this back to 2026, is that actually binding? No, it's not binding. And, he, and the next legislature can come in and and uh, revert it back to whatever they want to do or push it out even further. So I understand that. And but if we don't act in this legislature, that this is going to become law next year. Mm -hmm. So to us, there's a certain sense of urgency to to try to just slow it down a bit. Further questions, Senator Daniels. Thank you. Um, my understanding is that if we delay this, that there will be uh, tax increases on, our, and particularly our manufacturers. Can you speak to that, please? Well, that's not that's not our, in my understanding, or the ways House Ways and Means. Like, as I mentioned, uh, the B, there's a reason why the membership of the BIA is split on this bill, and on single sales factor, is because, and they're not taking a position. If, if this was going to be a tax benefit for every, every one of their members, I'm sure they would have a position of, you know, to pass, I mean, uh, or, or keeping single sales factor in place. Some of their members feel that that's not the case. Uh, and I, we don't even understand how big the swings will be. You know, so, some of the businesses will do a lot better, I would imagine, and some of the businesses will do a lot worse. Uh, but then I, I use the same logic on, well, 
It could be that the state is going to do a lot better or the state's going to do a lot worse in terms of the amount of revenue. You know, and if this was if this was like any other state where business taxes are a, a much smaller percentage of the of the revenue that comes in, that's one thing. But th this is our major revenue source by by far, as you all know. So uh, uh, hopefully, I answered your question, uh, Senator. Yeah, thank you. Further questions from members of the committee. Hearing none, thank you very much, Representative. Ava, you're up. <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, Representative Almi has her hand raised. All right, Representative Almi, please. Thank you, Senator Guida. Um, Senator D'Alessandro was on, us on that commission, which did meet uh, for two hearings and one, uh, one vote on last year. And um, he was the only one that came consistently. I can't remember who the other two were actually at this point. I think one was Senator Morse. Um, and the, um, we, were, we asked DRA to separate out uh, for the most recent data that they could get the, um, the amount of money that we would have gained or lost each year on if this had been in place before market-based sourcing. We had no way of, well, we had very little way of estimating. They came up with one, what happens under market-based sourcing. But on until from 13, I think they did 13 to 17. And it averaged out to, we lost a little bit of money over those years, but two years we gained a tiny amount of money and two years we lost you know, 15, 15 million, something like that. Um, but then um, they finished the data for 18 by the second meeting. And uh, at that, in 18, we would have lost something like $118 million. I can't quite, it was over $100 million. Um, they have the charts. I don't know if they have them with them uh, to show that. And they also... Uh, separated out the businesses uh, according to, they were looking at the businesses over $1 million and then all of the businesses. And they, they separated out those two groups. And the loss that we experienced, they gained $10 million more than that. All the rest of the businesses on uh, that paid less than a million dollars in taxes a year. Uh, we're losing, uh, we're having to pay more by 10 million in order to compensate. Uh, the other thing that they did to separate them out was they separated the ones that, uh, they, they picked the ones that they knew were mostly service oriented, which are the ones that are affected by market-based sourcing and the ones that were not service-based among those high level ones. And the, the difference, percentage difference between them, as I recall it, was, was very small in 18, in 2018, um, meaning that market-based probably isn't going to make a whole lot of difference to the final numbers. But once they have the market-based sourcing returns, which start to come in, uh, I believe, because it just started this year, they won't start to come in till next year. That's our problem. That's why 26 is we aren't going to have even one year until done, until two years from now. And uh, that will be a partial audit. There won't be any audits yet. And there won't be the ones that that file uh, extensions and don't tell you what they actually did until the fall of the year. Um, 26 is the first time they'd have most of two years of data. And as we saw before, on um, some years we were gaining a little, some years we were losing a little. 
the 2018 data seems to come from when they were, the major corporations were gaining a great deal of profit. And we're in a situation now with the pandemic where the great major corporations have been gaining a great deal of profit. And next year, they're, they're likely to be continuing this. And if they are, it's going to look, as far as I'm concerned, more like 2018 than the others. Also, another thing I wanted, to, well, two things. One on was that we had an expert who's been looking at this issue for quite a long time from a progressive think tank in DC. But before that, he was head for a while of the uh, tax, uh, uh, what do you call that? The, the um, multi-state tax uh, bureau. And um, he, he said that most states lose when they go over to single sales factor, but not a lot because the state with the, this, this we got from Patty Lovejoy's asking the DRA to look for the information on the highest percentage of the total revenues of any state that has done this is 7% that is in corporate income tax, which is equivalent to our business profits tax. Uh, and that was an outlier. Most of them are down around two to 5% of their total revenues. So they really have a lot less to lose than we do by doing this. Um, we agreed, I think in the group, we in the end just voted that we would um, support this legislation um, to go forward because we didn't have any constitutional ability to do what the uh, budget had told us to do. Um, but we did, um, we do worry a great deal about what this is going to mean, both in terms of our economy for the smaller businesses and smaller means all of our middle level businesses, as well as all the small ones. Um, and what uh, it would do to our revenues if we get another of these huge shifts that occurred in 2018. And we're, we're, our budget's pretty fragile at the moment in terms of revenues. Anyway, it's getting better, but, but we don't know if it's gonna stay better because of COVID, which might come back. Um, and we don't know what's going to happen to the large businesses actually when COVID ends and the pivot that they made has to be reversed. So that's, that's where, where we were from the work that was done in the fall. And Patty Lovejoy was running, running the, the task force that was dealing with that. Sorry, she decided she had to leave. All right. Any, uh, Questions from the members of the committee? Hearing none, thank you, Representative Almy. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chair, I do not see any hands raised at this time to speak to this bill, and there are no other folks signed up to speak. All right, and at this time, we'll go ahead and close the hearing on um, House Bill 281 FN. And we'll open the hearing on House Bill 324 FN. Um, the prime sponsor of this bill, Representative Major, is not under the attendees. However, Representative Almy has her hand raised. All right, Representative Almy, welcome back. I do have to un unmute again. Um, Representative Major called me last night and said, will you please introduce this bill for us? Um, and um, I'm fine with doing that. I think I remember everything we did last year. This is from last year again. Uh, got to you too late to be worked on. 
Um, it is a request of the Department of Revenue Administration. And um, it does four things. The first one is extremely simple. In section two, uh, it changes through electronic data submission, which they had to go ahead and, and define in another section, which makes it a lot less transparent, to electronically. And the second thing that it does is to exclude uh, at the current time uh, under the statutes, if a, um, a taxpayer is assessed further um, payment uh, on his taxes, um, he owes the interest from the first day that the assessment goes out, which is A, unfair, and B, um, unreasonable. <laughs> and um, it just exclude, allows the DRA to exclude the interest up to 30 days after the notice of assessment has gone out. The third thing that it does is it removes the consideration of weighted apportionment factors under the business profits tax from inclusion in the tax expenditure account report. And you just heard about that from Representative Brahmi. It was separately in his first bill, so it stayed in there. Um, and essentially the reason for that is it was put in back when we went, there are only a few of us on this, this Zoom that, that were here at that point, but that I wasn't. Uh, when we uh, went from on um, a three factor that was equally weighted to sales being double. And they wanted to see how that worked, what it did. And so they put that in as something to look at, but it's been in for so long now that there's nothing to compare it with anymore. And like the DRA said, it doesn't do anything. So that gets taken out. And then the last one is that when we uh, made all the adjustments for it, moving the partnerships to March and everybody else to April filing periods a couple of years ago, um, we forgot the nonprofit corporations, which had to be moved into conformity. And that's what that one does. So that um, it passed unanimously in our committee and went on the consent calendar. All right. Any questions from members of the committee? If not, I have. I do have one. And is is mm -hmm. is uh, the proviso in, is is one of the clauses in this bill impacting or impacted by House Bill Two Eighty One that we just closed the hearing on? Um, it shouldn't, no. Okay. Um, we do take the weighted apportionment factors out of the tax expenditure report, but it's a totally different issue than trying to follow up the single sales factor. I can't think of anything else that would be affected. All right. Uh, any further questions? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and close the hearing on House Bill 324. Uh, oh, is there someone else to testify? It, there is. Uh, okay. Representative Abrami has his hand or had his hand raised. Representative. Yeah, th thank you, uh, Senator Guy. I, then I took it down. I, all I wanted to say, we view this as very much as a housekeeping bill. Um, right. it, uh, the hearing didn't last very long. It was pretty clear that uh, we agreed with most of the provisions, all of the provisions that were in it. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Um, any further questions? I do note uh, that uh, I believe there's a, uh, a a very explanatory letter from Commissioner Stepp in testimony uh, that advocates for this bill and states the reasons why. So, any further questions from the committee? Hearing none, we'll go ahead and close the oh. hearing on. Mr. Oh, Chair, sure. I'm so sorry, Mr. Chair. So Carolyn Lear of the DRA had signed up to speak. Ah. 
Well, and she, Carolyn, she's welcome. I have. Thank you, Senator. Carolyn Lear, Assistant Commissioner of the New Hampshire Department of Revenue Administration. Um, I want to acknowledge that I did send a very long three-page letter explaining all of the various sections um, and that you did hear a nice recitation from Representative Almi. So I won't repeat either the contents of the letter or her testimony, um, but I will at least offer to answer any questions if the committee has them. Any questions from members of the committee? So Carolyn, it's very, always good to see you. And, uh, thank you very much for the letter. I, I think the letter was was yeah. re really self-explanatory. It was a very lengthy letter and a very detailed letter. So uh, appreciate that very much. So thank uh, the department. Thank Lindsay Step in the department. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very welcome, Senator Rosenwald. Did you have your hand up? No. Okay. Thank you. Any further questions from members of the committee? Hearing none, thank you, Carolyn. Any other testimony? Mr. Chair, that is all I have signed up to speak and I do not see any hands raised among attendees at this time. All right, then at this time we'll close the hearing on House Bill 324 FN. And with the, with the, without objection, we'll take a, a four minute break and be back at 1015 if that's okay. Sounds good. Now, uh, Mr. Chairman, are we going to ask uh, anyone else to come in to speak about the single sales factor? Because that's a that's a very uh, touchy subject and one that does have a, a significant impact on on how uh, how our revenues come. Uh, and there were there were two very different points of view in the commission. Just um, a thought. Yeah, well, we, let's get back in session. I'll, I have some comments that I'll share with the committee. Great. Uh, and uh, let me just take a break here. We'll be right back. Great. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it was Richard, Richard Collins, so you could just cause up.
Sonia, are you aware, do you have the list? Were we going to exec bills? Do we have a list? I can't seem to find it. <laughs> so we have to exec Senate Bill 112. Today is the right. deadline for that. Right. Right. And then um, let me just pull up the master sheet. I think I think the only other bills we could exec are the ones we heard today. Right. Are you sure? All right, well, I think we can get at least one of those. Maybe two more, we might get two more done. Welcome back everyone. <clears throat> yeah, we'll come back into session. Um, I think um, we can we can probably exec uh, a couple of these. Um, I'm thinking 306 and 324 uh, that we heard this morning. Yeah. And so, if anyone's interested, I'd be willing to accept the motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. Sir, second. Moved by Dal, Sandra, seconded by Hennessy. Uh, we're now going to uh, take a vote to go into executive session. Senator Dal, Sandro. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes. Senator Daniels. Yes. And Senator Guida votes yes. We're now in executive session. Uh, I think I think three twenty four would probably be the easiest. the easiest to start with. Is there a motion on that? I move out to pass. Ought to pass on three, two, four back, uh, seconded by Rosenwald. Uh, and uh, any discussion? I think this bill is requested by the department and it does housekeeping, makes their job easier and, and helps our small businesses as well with some of the, the uh, intricacies that were inconveniences in terms of, for example, uh, uh, late filings and things like that, interest and so forth. So uh, any without further discussion, uh, we'll go ahead and call a roll. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. Senator Daniels? Yes. And Senator Guida votes yes. Move consent. Motion. Okay, consent by Rosenwald, seconded? Second. By Hennessy. All right, we'll call the roll. Uh, D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. Senator Daniels? Yes. Senator Guida votes yes. All right. Would there be a motion on? Um... We'll take that out, Mr. Chair. Oh, good point. Who wants to take that out? I'll take that out. That's pretty simple. All right. Uh, is there a motion on House Bill 306? I have to move the amendment first. Okay. Correct. Uh, all right, I'll move amendment. O eight seven zero S Tahoe three oh six. All right. I, do we do we not move the bill first and then the amendment inside the context of the bill? Okay. Well either way. I think so. Either yep, way. Yep, yep, yep. Either way. Okay. Yeah, All right, let's yeah. let's let's move, let's move the, bill the bill first, first and move the amendment. Okay. All right. All right. So, D'Alessandro and Hennessy uh, on 306. Um, and now I will we'll take a vote on that and then we'll go to the, we'll go to the amendment. Yes. Now, so is there a motion on an amendment? I would move the amendment. Second. Seconded by Hennessy. Um, any discussion on the, on the amendment to, two, to 306? And, let me get the exact amendment number just so we're clear. 0870S. That's the one. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Any discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes, I guess so. <laughs> 
Yes. Senator Daniels. Yes. And Senator Guy to vote yes. All right. Any uh, motion, motion for consent? Um, we need a. Wait. Uh, yeah, let's move, the, let's move the amended bill. Thank you very much. Yeah. I move the, the bill as amended. Okay. Ought, ought to pass as amended by D'Alessandro. Second. Second. Hennessy. All right. Any discussion? Senator Daniels, your hand was up first. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go back to my question as to whether, number one, whether this is really needed or not, because um, it appears like the chair has the ability to call a meeting right now. And then secondly, where it specifies the things that they can get together to talk about. Uh, if anything were to come in the future or any changes, I wonder if that's actually limiting them uh, to the things that they would need to talk about uh, versus leaving it open as it is. Senator Rosenwald. Thank you. I have the same concerns that Senator Daniels does. I mean, these are executive branch agencies who work under the direction of the governor. And so I just, they're already able to do this as their practice to send a signal is not, hmm, I'm not sure that passing legislation should be done to send a signal. So I, I just, I'm not sure that this bill is needed. Further discussion? Well, if I, 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 I think I agree with both uh, both senators. It, it's not needed. <clears throat> From our, our perception, it's not needed. From their perception, it is needed. They passed it unanimously in their, in their committee. Uh, and as a result of that, I don't see any harm in, in, in doing this. So I will vote, I will vote for this in support of, of uh, the fact that the House Ways and Means thinks that they need it. Further discussion? Hearing none, we'll call the roll. Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Daniels. You're muted. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and Senator Guida will vote yes. Move consent. Second on consent? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you're thrilled. I can tell you're excited about this bill. <laughs> well, I don't want to discuss it anymore. I know. So I'm just right. happy to have it on consent. I don't think it's going to do anything. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Been that kind of a morning. <laughs> All right. Well, then, uh, moved and seconded. Hennessy and uh, Rosenwald will call the roll. Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes. Senator Daniels. Yes. And Senator Guy to vote yes. I'm not sure we just did anything, but we did something. I was <laughs> waiting for Senator Daniels. <laughs> Who's going to take that out, Mr. Chair? Uh, who wants to take that out? All right, Senator Hennessy will take it out. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. <laughs> You're welcome. All right. Um, I don't think we're going to get to 281 today. Um, uh, Senator Dow, Senator, did you think we should have some other people come in to talk about it? Yes, yes. I, I, now, I think let me share my, let me share <clears throat> your thoughts. Okay. I, I spoke with Commissioner Stepp this morning on this very bill. Yep. And uh, in essence, she said they're neutral. It's going to vary from year to year. It's going to go up year, some years, it's going to go down some years. Um, but she did not express any level of concern. Um, and she said she would be fine with, with implementing it as is, as far as the dates that, uh, she had no problem with doing that. Um, my perspective is that we do have businesses that are planning and have planned on this. Right. Uh, and, and so again, um, 
you know, I, I don't like, you know, s- switching hitters in the middle of the stream. Yeah, businesses have to make, you know, one, five, 10 year plans. They put this into their, uh, their whole uh, structure, their corporate uh, finances. And, and so uh, I will be voting uh, to ITL this and I'd accept the motion to do so if anyone's well moved. To. Second. Moved by Rosenwald, seconded by D'Alessandro. Any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, we'll call the roll. Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes. Senator Daniels. Yes. Senator Guida votes yes. I'd be right. happy to take it out if you want. Um, I'm gonna take this one out, Cindy, okay. if that's okay. All right. Yep. Thanks. Of course. Right. All right. And Wait. um is it going? Who can say? Oh yeah. Yeah. So second. All right. Consent, Hennessy, second, Rosenwald, all, all right, all in favor, sorry. Uh, Senator D'Alessandro. Uh, I'm going to say no on this one. I, I think this deserves an explanation, and as okay. you, have, you have articulated it. I've been on all of these committees, so uh, I think okay. people ought to know what we're doing. All right, then sure. that's good. We'll, we'll, uh, no consent. And I'll take it out, and if we have any further yeah, I think that's about it for today. No, right. Senator, we have to do Senate Bill 112. Oh, that's right, an FN. That's right, Senate Bill 112 FN. My sorry. Are you looking for a motion? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to get the bill open first. Okay. I just do not like this. <laughs> All right, Senate Bill 112. This is about historical racing. All right. Is there a motion? On Senate Bill 112. I'm a little hesitant because I'm, I'm catching up on it here quickly. Move on to pass. Second. All right. Moved and seconded. Uh, and 112 is ought to pass. Any discussion? All right. Hearing none, are you ready for the question? We'll take the roll. Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes. Senator Daniels. Yes. Senator Guida votes yes. All right. Consent. Move consent. Second. Okay. Hennessy and Daniels on consent on Senate Bill 112. Um, Senator D'Alessandro. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes. Senator Daniels. Yes. Senator Guida votes yes. Who wants to take it out? I'll do that. Okay, Senator Daniels has it. All right, any um, further business? Sonia, thank you again for steering me down the right road and thank you all for your patience, uh, members of the committee. Um, at this time, I think we can go ahead and uh, come out of exec, right? We'll so move. Exec. Second. All right. Move Daniel. Second, Alessandro. Uh, Senator Lou. Yes. Senator Hennessy. Yes. Senator Daniels. Yes. Senator Rosenwald. Yes. Senator Guida votes yes. We're now out of executive session, and um, we'll take a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Sure. Second. Okay, D'Alessandro Rosenwald for adjournment. Senator D'Alessandro? Yes. Senator Hennessy? Yes. Senator Daniels? Yes. Senator Rosenwald? Yes. Senator Guida votes yes. And again, thank you all for your patience, your patient endurance of my foibles, and uh, we'll see you, uh, we'll see you soon.
Thank you. Bob, are you able yes. to take a phone call about a totally different subject? Sure. Okay, I'll give you a call. 